for some reason, which is weird. Okay, welcome to our first OSPO working group meeting of the new year. So thanks everybody for, for coming out. Um, and we have, we have a few things on the agenda there. There's some, uh, to be honest, it's mostly some things that I've been kind of working on over the, over the holidays. So, so uh, some things that I wanted to, wanted to talk about. If you have other items that you want to talk about on the agenda, there is still the replace this with your agenda item section. So feel free to continue to add items on because I don't think we have. I don't think we have everything we're going to talk about because I I am bumping the cross OSPO experiment progress to next week because uh, unfortunately Gary's not feeling well he's under the weather so um, and Emma's not here and to be fair I don't think they made a lot of progress it was the holidays like they weren't they weren't meeting and and moving things forward so I think that's I think that's fair to just talk about that in in two weeks. Um, but I will start to talk about uh, a couple of the things that I had on the agenda. So the first one, and you can, everybody should have access to that if you don't let me know. Um, but I started, I started thinking more about, um, is this big enough? Can people see this? You want me to? I can them. see it. Just a, a tiny yeah. bit bigger would be, would be nice yeah. if you can do it. <laughs> okay. Bigger would be nice. Uh, actually, I can just zoom, I think. Oh, there we go. That's better. Um, yeah, much better. Thank you. Yeah, no worries. Uh, so his, historically, the Chaos Project has has really uh, what I affectionately refer to as a pile of metrics. So we've had we've had lots of metrics. We have started organizing those metrics into metrics models, which um, is a fantastic start. So we've talked about some of the metrics models that we have in in past meetings, but we started especially with Gary's new viability metrics models, we started thinking about the fact that we have, we have kind of two different ways of, of looking, OSPOs have two different ways of looking at open source. And I've uh, worked in some OSPOs and talked to a bunch of OSPO folks. And broadly, it seems like we tend to divide the world, the open source world into two buckets. One is like the contribution bucket, so whether that's contributing to the projects that your company has started or contributing to upstream projects you care about. And then there's the downstream consumption of open source. So actually pulling these open source projects into your products, services, infrastructure, um, and you know, complying with the licenses and all the compliance stuff that goes, goes around that. So one of the things that we wanted to do within the chaos project was um, be a little bit more thoughtful and intentional about this and use it as a way to help people find the metrics that they're looking for. Because if you're if you're working on the consumption side and you're working on the contribution side, while, while there are a few metrics that probably have some overlap, there are some big differences. So we're, we're looking at ways that we can make it easier for people to find the metrics and, and um, how to get people started with with those two metrics and those two kind of broad categories. So for the contribution metrics, um, we have the starter project health metrics model, which some of you may be familiar with. Um, if somebody could drop the link to that in the uh, in the meeting minutes, that would be that would be helpful. Um, somebody who's not presenting. Um, for people who aren't familiar with it, you can have a look, but it's it's really, it's time diverse response. Uh, it's change request closure ratio, which is another responsiveness metric, bus factor and uh, release frequency. So it's four things that give people kind of a start when it comes to measuring the, the health of an open source project from a contribution standpoint. And then we have the consumption metrics and we've, kind of organize those. Gary has done a lot of work um, in those vi new viability metrics models, and it's actually four separate metrics models um, around different topics. So one of the things that we've uh, talked about is maybe we need a kind of a starter viability uh, model, which I haven't had a chance to talk to Gary about um, or you know help uh, talk to him about putting putting that together. And then, so you've got these two, two different kinds of metrics. And then 
regardless of which, whether you're looking at contribution metrics or consumption metrics, you also have the cycle of improving, right? So you, you do a thing that you think is going to improve this metric that you're looking at, uh, and then you measure it again, did it work, did it not? And so it's this iterative, iterative cycle. And then there's also a piece that is, you know, monitoring the progress uh, over time. So not necessarily, you know, just when you're making improvements, but monitoring some things over time to see if they're um, they're stable. Okay, so I, I talked for, I think, five minutes straight. Uh, my question for all of you, uh, for those of you that work in OSPOs, does this does this resonate with you? Is this is this kind of how you look at your OSPO? Is this um, would this be a useful way of organizing metrics? Yeah, this is uh, very similar to the model that we follow at, my, uh, at Microsoft. Uh, it, it, the starter project health is is new to me, so I'm I'm going to check out those the link and, and the metrics there, but the overall workflow, yeah, definitely, definitely similar to what we follow. Cool. Yeah. I'd love your feedback on the starter project health metrics model. Uh, to be honest, you're like way past that. This is sort of to help people get started. Um, hey, but we, we have tiny projects too. <laughs> um, well, this is less about starter projects and it's more about OSPOs that haven't done much with metrics and uh, don't know where to start. So, so we've we've talked about changing the name because this has been a constant confusion. It's not it's not for new projects that are starting. It's for people who haven't done much with metrics and are overwhelmed by the the wall of metrics and don't know where to start. Okay. So you you are definitely way past that. Um, yes, I, I, yes, I am. Sadly, <laughs> some days I miss it. But uh, I'd welcome your feedback on the the metrics model, anyways, um, if you have any. Happy to provide it if I have them. Thanks. How about how about others? Does this resonate? Um, I'm curious. I'm just gonna. Oh, I see Chan went off mute. What do you yeah, think? Yeah, I I think this makes a lot of sense. Um, I one of my questions is, um, I guess, how can we help? How can we um, contribute to this starter viability? How can we um, contribute to this model? Uh, yes, um, I'm, I'm going to get to that, um, because I think it's, it's probably less about contributing to this, uh, this bit and more about, uh, contributing to the insight guides, which is the next, the next topic, because I'm actively looking for, for help with that. And that gets at, it gets at some of this for sure. So I'll, yeah. I'll I promise to come back to that. We'll cycle back to the, how you can help. Thanks, Don. Yeah. I'm curious, Remy, I'm just going to, I'm, I'm just going to call on you um, because I'm curious if this resonates with you because you've worked in, in both the corporate environments at places like Twitter, OSPO, and now you're working more on the, the government side. I'm curious if, if this resonates with the way that you look at OSPOs. Yeah, it, it resonates. I think in previous world where we had more metrics or more maturity around sort of the the projects it was more important when we were depending on and valuing external contributions more whereas now you know the public sector is less mature in that way where they're more you know insular more of an inner source style so the metrics for like community activity and outside contributions are less important at this part in the journey, but I think as we get more maturity in the program office, we can start to say like, hey, if you really want the benefits of open source, you know, moving along on this maturity model is going to be beneficial. So, you know, we've invested a lot of time currently in in present OSPO into the, you know, new project maturity models and new project repo hygiene and health and getting a, a healthy start. I think that's a lot of it because we just have like, a massive backlog of legacy code and stuff that shipped. So, you know, going forward with good practices is important to set that that good baseline and then modeling for other projects. So we're going to get more retrospective-y and more like of the feedback loop going soon. But, um, you know, really we're starting from, you know, going forward, this is how we want healthy projects to start and then get retrospectively go back from there. Over the next couple of quarters, we're building some tools to help. 
Cool. Thank you. The inbound and outbound, you know, contribution and consumption buckets, like definitely. And then the, you know, monitor for feedback and improve based on that feedback. Yeah, totally the loop. Awesome. Thanks. Anyone else have any feedback, questions, thoughts on this before we move to the next agenda item? Yeah, I have a, a question. I'm new to this meeting series and um, I'm kind of lurking around the to-do group for a couple of, of years. Um, where do people where do people think that OSPOs go to sort of understand which metrics help them support their evidencing their goals and strategy? So obviously, like this is sort of presupposing that you already know as an OSPO leader where the you know what your primary contribution to company strategy is. And maybe I'm asking a question that's sort of a bit further upstream from from people who are at this stage. I'm just curious. Yeah, so so this was designed just to kind of help us organize the metrics a little more. Um, one one of the things that uh, personally that I I talk about a lot is that um, your the first thing before you start diving into the metrics, the first thing you need to figure out is what you're trying to do as an organization, and and then what metrics you can measure to to support that. And so I think a lot of those conversations about that. Um, I, I would like to say a lot of those conversations happen in in this meeting. Um, you know, and, and this one, this is this is kind of me talking about some of the stuff that we're doing to help people who are newer in that journey. Um, but a lot of times we have, um, you know, we have we have people from Microsoft talking about what they're doing. We have we have people from a lot of these established OSPOs talking about the work that they're doing with with metrics and how, and in particular, how they show the impact of of the work that they do. Um, using using data to to show that is that helpful? Yeah, I, I it, it makes sense. This is you know this is answering more granular questions um, about so you know you need this metric. How are you gonna how are you gonna manage that? Yeah. Um. Okay. So I think I'm going. Oh, Sean, go ahead. I was just I was just gonna add that. Um... If you're starting out, there are some of these starter metric models are helpful just to get a sense of the scope of what you're looking at. So even if so, if you don't know the metrics that you're looking for, um, the starter health metric model and some of the ones that Gary's identified are useful to other OSPOs, and it might those might just be helpful to get that data and just use it as a survey to try to understand what questions those don't answer. So you can approach it concretely as well as abstractly. And I also, just to add on to that, I think that the insight guides that we're going to talk about in the next agenda item will also help with that because those are focused around a problem and not um, not necessarily around a particular metric. Paula, you have your hand up. Hi, and this might be jumping ahead to the next topic. I just wondered if people have questions or comments about this piece. Is there a place that we can add comments to an issue or where would you like that feedback or questions to go? Oh yeah, that's that's a that's that's a great point. Um, you should actually have access to add comments to this document directly if you so chose to do that. Um, the other place that would be a good a good place for comments would be in the the Slack channel. Um, that would be another another good place. There isn't an issue for this particular um, this particular thing. Thanks. Yeah. Um, and then the the other piece of this, and I'll talk about this just quickly before I jump in, back into the, uh, talk about the insight guides. Um, I've also, make this, I can make this one a little bit smaller. Um, I've, I've also, and this, this will tie into the insight guides. So you'll see this, uh, kind of this theme later, but one of the things that I'm I'm trying to get people to visualize is particularly around this is around the starter project health metrics model. It's got you know the four metrics. Two of them are responsiveness metrics, and then what I want people to start thinking about is as you're as you're looking at ways to improve a particular um, particular problem, 
there are other metrics models that you can use to do that. So we have a starter project health metrics model with four metrics. But once you get started with that, there's there are loads of places that you can go next. So, you know, if you're improving responsiveness, we have two metrics models, development responsiveness and community activity. And the metrics in those models might help you further diagnose some of the issues that you're seeing. Same thing on, uh, you know, bus factor and release frequency. So we have, we have other metrics models that you can use as next steps. Um, and then there's, you can monitor and continue to improve using, using additional, additional metrics. So this is, this is just kind of to help people once they get started, sort of figure out what the, what the next steps are. And again, feel free to, to leave comments in the, in the doc or in the Slack channel. Um, okay. So one, one of the things that I've committed to do as part of the data science initiative is help people interpret the metrics and make improvements in their project um, based on the, the problems, the problems that they're having and, and see how metrics can help them help them solve their problems. Now the insight guides are really focused around a particular problem. So I've I've done one, well, I've done an introduction guide, which is the stuff that's common across all things, things you just need to think about as you're using, using metrics and making improvements. Um, and then I've I've built out the responsiveness guide. And what what I'm really interested in getting from this meeting is feedback on that on that document. Um, in, in two different ways, you know, is, so you can see there's also a template that people can use to create new ones. So is, is the format of it useful? And then if you have some particular expertise and responsiveness, um, if you have feedbacks, on, feedback on other, other things to include in this, in this guide, that would be, that would be helpful. So I can show you what it looks like. So it's, you know, there are two metrics that are the starter project health metrics model two metrics that are focused on responsiveness. So I combined those together because I think it makes sense to look at responsiveness as kind of a general a general problem. And this has link a link to the, the model itself. Um, and it talks about like, so the first part, I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna read this. I'm gonna kind of just go through the sections and let you read it on your own. And, and like I said, feel free to drop as many comments as you'd like into these, into the stock. Um, the first section is really about why it's important and why you should be thinking about responsiveness. Um, the second step is some metrics and what those look like and um, kind of roughly how you in interpret it. And then um, so it's it's got it for for both of the both of the models. And then it talks about how to diagnose particular, potential issues. So it talks about some of the some of the issues that you might see, um, some of the things that um, may or may not be important depending on the type of community that you have. Uh, there's a step about gathering additional data, which is what I kind of showed you on that other graph. So if you're looking at responsiveness, you can also look at the development responsiveness model, the community activity model. Um, I'll include links to those models uh, in here as well. I, I think I forgot to do that. And then there's a step four, which is the make improvements. So this really, um, this kind of steps away from, from the data and it talks about in general, how do you improve responsiveness within your community? So it talks about how you, um, how you might approach solving the problem depending on what's going on with your, within your community. So no two open source projects are the same. No two communities are the same. So it kind of walks you through things to think about as you're making those improvements and where you might want to focus and where you might not want to focus depending on the, the type of community that you're looking at. And then the step five is monitoring the results um, and some things that you might want to think about while you're doing that. There's a section on cautions and considerations and then some, some additional reading. So, so that's that's kind of a lot, but that's sort of the format for these insight guides. You've got uh, a topic, you've got some metrics, you've got a you know possibly a metrics model, um, why it's important, and then each of these sections that I talked about earlier. 
Um, so, so this is where I could use some help because I will write, um, I'll write insight guides for the rest of the starter project health model. So, uh, I'll do something around releasing and I'll do something around, um, bus factor or, uh, contributor risk, uh, as a way to think of that more broadly. So, so I will do those and we'll kind of you know, packages up as a guide. Uh, I'd love your feedback on these as I as I finish them. But also getting to Chan's earlier question, um, anyone can use this template to create new insight guides and then we can publish them uh, within the chaos project. So if there's something that you're thinking about that you're passionate about, um, and want to write an insight guide about it, I would say you can, you can either just get started on it. You can talk to me and, and just, uh, let me know so that we're not creating any, any duplication. Um, but I would say that this is something that we can, we can all work on together. There's also the other thing I just want to mention quickly is that there is an introduction because there are a lot of things as I was starting to write the responsiveness one, I was like, well, you know, this really applies to any metrics. Um, so things like, uh, you know, look, looking at trends and how you, how you need to look at kind of, um, how you need to look at those trends because the data can be really noisy. Um, so there's some, some notes about that. Some, some things to think about when diagnosing problems. Um, and so there, there are things to think about that are general. So the general stuff that applies to almost every metric that you could possibly do, um, those things are in this introduction guide. So if there are other things you can think about that should be in the introduction, granted we're trying to keep the introduction a little bit short if possible. Um, and then there's a big list of cautions and considerations. But I would say if you have any feedback on on that, on the introduction, that would also be helpful. And so again, I've talked for like 10 minutes uh, and now I'm just going to pause and, and see what people think. Hey Dawn, Emma here. Hey um, Emma. I just wanna say this is first of all, awesome. I'm so glad that you have this role at Chaos. This is like amazing stuff you're already bringing. So that, that this is awesome. Um, I just had a question about like where, how you see it, it's discoverability more like, and I'm a few minutes late to the meeting, so I'm sorry about that, but is it like a companion for a metrics model or will it be like a companion for individual metrics? Cause I, I think at the top you had like two different types of metrics, but it wasn't necessarily a metrics model. So I was just trying to understand the relationship between like those things, if, if there is one. Um, yeah, so there, there, I would say that there's a loose relationship. Um, what I'm trying, what I'm trying to focus the insight guides are, um, around a problem. So in this case, the problem is responsiveness. Now this happens to be included in the starter project health metrics model. So, so the way that, and, and because yeah. this is going to be on a website, we can, we can cut it in different, different ways and link to things differently, depending on, um, you know, on, on a few different things, but my thinking was that we could, we could link to the insight guides from, from metrics models, for example, that would have the insight guides for, um, you know, in this case, the starter project health metrics model will probably have three insight guides for the different types of metrics. Yeah. It might yeah, make yeah. sense. Like when you look at the viability ones that Gary created, because yeah. those are already around a particular problem, like, you know, the, the community aspect, for example, of viability, it might make sense to do one insight guide around, around, uh, you know, each of the, the metrics models. So I think it's going to depend, but I, I want these kind of focused on problems so that mm -hmm. somebody doesn't necessarily have to start with the starter project health metrics model. It could be somebody with, you know, uh, you know, a big community, they're having some issues with, uh, you know, improving response times for things. And then they could just look at this, this one particular guide. So I think there'll be lots of different paths in. Yeah, that makes sense. I mean, I think from an OSPO perspective, this is really great to, you know, help maintainers. I mean, we can, recommend things like metrics models, but there's often those questions of like, you know, what does this mean? How do I interpret this? And so this is very, very helpful in, in kind of 
that area. So that makes sense. Thank you, Dawn. Yeah. And I'll be honest, like the, um, this make improvements section, um, even if, if, if you're a maintainer and you're not necessarily measuring the things that are in this, uh, you know, uh, in the sections above, you can still make improvements to things that will probably help your responsiveness. So, so these are really focused, not necessarily on like the metrics are a piece of it and hopefully an important piece. And it's something that we think about a lot at, from chaos, but you wouldn't necessarily have to be measuring these exact things or frankly, even measuring anything at all. You could, you could look at this make improvement section and, and make some improvements. Now you wouldn't be able to measure whether you were successful or not, but, um, but you, you could just even just use this section. So this might be helpful for, for maintainers, especially if you're already measuring things, like maybe they don't need the other sections of this guide. You could just point them to the make improvements section. Uh, Matt, you've got your hand up. Yeah, so just following up on Emma's point, we it's kind of an operational thing, but we probably do need to think about the website because like we have metrics and we kind of tell people don't start there. <laughs> start with metrics models. Mm -hmm. um, if we have the insight guides as well, which is a possibility for people to start there as well. Um, we might want to just think about how we present this material in a way that is really intuitive for people to engage with it. Yeah, absolutely. Um, and I will, I will admit that, you know, my, uh, my background is on is in data um, and and not necessarily in website design. So I am hoping that we can get some folks with some better uh, expertise in that area to help us better organize some of this information. We need like a real like I think we need a real like information architecture kind of approach to um, the guides, the metrics, the metrics models, and really be sort of thoughtful about how we how we need to organize that. But we've got some great designers floating around the uh, chaos community, so hopefully we can we can get a couple of them to help us out. Alice just mentioned. <laughs> oh yeah, I, it, it's not something I've done very recently, but I used to be head of user centered design in one of my previous roles. So I did a lot of IA um, websites. Well, I think that's exactly what we need, Alice. So. <laughs> <laughs> also, I've done quite a lot of um, docs for open source tools and things. So. Oh, nice got some uh, a bit of relevant experience <laughs> awesome well we may we may call on you later sure thanks um anything else on this topic kind of like this slides make suggestions right here in the template uh, right in I'm sorry if you already said that where to make suggestions um I would say make suggestions wherever you wherever you'd like um okay. if you think the if you think the template itself isn't right like it's missing a section yeah. or or something feel free to okay. do it in the template um and I welcome a specific specific feedback on the actual responsiveness guide but also the, the introduction so I would say have a look at all of those and feel free to provide feedback on them okay that That's would be super helpful because like I said, I, I'm, I'm, I'm not sure that anyone else other than me has actually looked at these. So uh, maybe I should have prefaced, I don't know if I said that at the beginning, but these, these are really things that came out of my head and are probably not complete, are probably not quite right. There are probably things that we can make better. So please uh, feedback away. That would be helpful. Sean. I just wanted to, Chan uh, asked in the chat if there was a visual for the full metric life cycle. And I responded that the project has emerged sort of organically where first we needed standards of what to, how to measure things. So that's metrics and then standards or ways that people commonly consume them. And those are the software and the metrics models. And I think now what you're doing with these guides is really like we have so many different assets that these guides kind of help us interpret them and follow the process for our OSPO as opposed to a general metric. I don't, so I was just call attention to that chat. That's it, I'll shut up. Thanks, Sean. No. And I, I wonder if um, like at the end of these, got, well, whenever this guide is um, uh, finalized and published, if then um, producing a visual from it um, could be helpful uh, just so that 
you know, it's just another um, piece of content for, for those who are a little more visual, I guess. Yeah, that, that sounds, that sounds great. I would, I would love to have some more, more visuals that help people kind of understand the the process. That would be, yeah, that would be good. I hadn't really, hadn't really thought about that. And, and I'll be honest, the, the visualizations are, are not my, not my strength. So I, I'd welcome any feedback on that. If there are some visualizations that you think would be, um, would be helpful. You could play around with that a little bit. I'm not great at it, but a little. <laughs> just thinking of a lot of the LF reports too. They always have that front page, which is kind of the infographic page. Yeah. The TLD yeah. and then the rest of the text. Yeah. If that's what you're thinking, Chan. Yeah. Um, I, I think anything would be great. I don't, I was just thinking of any visual that could basically like break up some of the language and just be helpful. Cause I, I'm a visual person, but I'm also not great at making visuals either. Yeah. And um, yeah, yeah. And these are, this is like you said, this is a lot of, this is a lot of text. Um, you know, I don't think it lends itself well to like sort of the, the infographic model necessarily. Um, but because it's more of like a, more of a process. So I think some of the other graphics that Matt, that you've been working on in like Canva, maybe, maybe something like yeah. that. Would be... yes, Matt's becoming our Canva resource, our champion, yeah. our Canva champion. I, I start with it and then I'm like, <laughs> I get lost in it for like an hour. <laughs> <Until. laughs> it's crazy. Okay. Um, any, any other thoughts? comments on the insight guides. Okay. Um, and Emma, I was, I mentioned this before you joined, um, Gary messaged me and says that he's, he's under the weather, not feeling well, and that, um, not a lot happened on this topic anyways, because it was, it was over the holidays, but if, so I'm, I'm kind of going to move the majority of this discussion for for two weeks but if there's anything that you want to just update add um for for now no i think we definitely got into uh, a um a lull point where um there's a bunch of us that want to participate but the leadership i think is that investment is more on gary's side and so um, however that shakes out, I don't want to also make it feel like it's, um, we're still, we're still moving ahead. So there's really nothing to say other than. Okay. Yeah, that's fair. I mean, it was, it was the holidays, right? So not, a, not a lot happens over the holidays and it's hard to get, it's hard to get groups of people organized to do something. Um, yeah. I think we did mind. decide though, that we, we, that having a separate meeting, trying to do it separately was too, was too difficult because that requires that everyone have a time again and so somehow during this meeting we hope to just kind of carve out any conversations we need I think that we've decided on yeah yeah that that sounds good so we'll we'll carve out some time in the next meeting for for those discussions Don, can you give some context for folks that might be new on the call oh yeah sorry so the um the idea with with this topic is that um there's, it's kind of an experiment where I think you all picked a particular metric or metric model. I don't know, Emma, yeah. which one? Model. Um, so I was trying to confirm, so I went out and I have like my regular meetings too. Um, you're trying to say that today is the best day, right? Is that what you were trying to say? Sorry, you got, I think you're, can somebody mute? Oh my God. Yeah. <laughs> Thanks, sorry. <laughs> um. Sorry, Emma. So you picked a model. Yeah, the the goal is to across a few different OSPOs, all attempt or implement a metrics model in the way that makes sense for our organizations, and then report back. And but have some kind of unified approach to that exper that is an experiment. Not how we implement them might be different, but having a unified approach to the experiment so that at the end we can kind of share what was different, what was the same, and so that we can start to build that. Um, I mean, I think the thing that I was excited about was that we start to build this kind of community of practice around metrics model where 
you know, someone a new Osco might join, and there there's this history about how you know, like Microsoft and you know, a bunch of other uh, have already tried it. So I, I that that knowledge piece, I think I'm excited about. Yeah. Yeah, I'm really excited about this because I think it's going to be interesting to see how the different OSPOs um, approach the same metrics model and 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 what happens, like what what works for for one, what doesn't work for another. I think it'll be really interesting to see the output of this. So I'm I'm really looking forward to it. Yeah, thank you. Any other questions about that particular topic? wondering Emma what your time you expect the timeline to be like is an experiment for six months mm. I would I would expect it to be six months like so Garrett I expect when we I think it'll be a month before we kind of get aligned on that that piece where we all know what how we're going to experiment or that alignment I spoke about and then I would just out of an abundance of like respect for everyone's different time and capacities, give a, imagine that like mid-year we'll have something. I don't know if the other groups would agree on that, but that feels like the most uh, likely to me. Yeah, that sounds know. really interesting. Yeah. Yeah, well, we should include you. I mean, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> In in, we'll, we'll, in spirit, in spirit. Yeah, we'll share out anyway. So. Yeah. Was there another comment? Okay. Um. Yeah. So yeah, looking forward to that one. Um, the last thing on the agenda is just a couple of reminders. So the Open Source Summit North America CFP closes on January 14th. So that is uh, Sunday, I believe. So you only have a couple of days to get your proposals in. Uh, we did submit one panel around the viability metrics model. So um, so we're hoping that we're hoping that that gets accepted. And then I know that some of us submitted some other other talks along the way. So we we've got a few submissions in around uh, metrics and chaos adjacent topics. But this is just your friendly reminder that that CFP is, is closing soon. And that's for the event in, in Seattle in uh, is it April, May, something like that. April. April. Uh, the links, the links right there. Uh, and then, <laughs> um, and then, uh, ChaosCon EU is February first. It is uh right before the Thursday before FOSDEM, so it's not too late to register and join us if you are going to be in in Brussels for FOSDEM and would like to join us for ChaosCon. Uh, we will also be live streaming it. Um, which will, for those of you in the U.S., be at a really unfortunate uh, time, I think, uh, because it's during the uh, during the day in Europe. Um, so so crazy early, uh, if depending on what time you get up and what time zone you're in. Um, but we will, uh, because we're live streaming it, Sean. I assume that we will also just post the videos afterwards. Yeah, I th if we stream it on YouTube, it'll actually do that for us. It'll preserve okay. the streamed content. Okay. The bit that you'll miss if you're not there in person is the roundtable discussions, which is a pretty big chunk of the agenda. Um, and then there's afternoon, there's some workshops, which also won't be uh, live streamed, I don't think. Um, no, workshops are hard to follow. Remotely. Yeah, exactly. And the social event. Not like and the social event. Well, yeah. have we decided not to stream the social event because that could be fun. <laughs> yeah, that's a good idea. <laughs> yep. So I hope I hope some of you can can join us there. Um, we have six more minutes. Uh, anybody have anything else that they want to talk about? Um. Yeah. Let's just take a take a gap to say that. Um, I'm currently taking a break between roles and um, part of what I'm doing with the time is to get more involved with the to-do group, which I haven't been super active in, um, but I have a, a, quite a wide skill set across um, program management and um, other things that I've I mentioned before. So writing, 
uh, designing. Um, I've worked in developer relations quite a bit, I've worked with a few different open source projects. So if anybody has something interesting they'd like me to, you know, review or, or help out with an extra pair of hands, just drop me a note in Slack. Um, I'd be more than happy to get involved. Yeah, that would be that would be great. Thank you so much. We'll we'll think about we'll think about that for sure. I'm already thinking about it. <laughs> <laughs> thank you, Alice, for the kind of offer. Yes, yeah, thank you. very much. And we look forward to seeing you around the the meetings now that you're uh, have a little more free time for this this sort of thing. Yeah, happy to be here. Uh, anything else anyone wants to mention, talk about? Um, the, the next meeting, I didn't, I didn't look at my, sorry, I'm, I'm just going to diverge for just a second. Look at my calendar. It isn't when we're all traveling to FOSDEM, is it? No. no, it's the week before. Um, does anybody have anything that they would like to add to the agenda for the meeting in two weeks? So that would be the 25th. I think you can we'll add, add um, the, the cross OSPO thing. Sorry, Sean, go ahead. Uh, I think I think our um, software as a server SaaS offerings with Compass, they won't be done, but we can begin to talk about the different SaaS things that are available. Yeah, that would be great. Uh, anybody else have anything that they want me to add? Sounds like from the viability metrics models, there was an intention to maybe make a starter one that would, maybe we could talk about that a little bit. Yeah. I'll give Gary a heads up on, on Slack. Okay. I don't wanna, I don't wanna add work for him on the agenda without telling him why, why we wanna talk about it. Because you and I have talked about this a little bit, the the need for it, and I don't think we've had a chance to talk to Gary because it was over okay. the holidays. Um, yeah, perfect. Uh, the other thing I will mention, since we have a fair number of new people on on the call, is that the agendas are very organic. So if you think of something that you would like to add to the agenda, um, you can create the you know the next one for the twenty fifth. If I haven't already done it. Feel free to add your stuff to the agenda at any point. So this is not not Dawn and Gary's my co-chair. It's not Dawn and Gary giving you all of the stuff. So this one was a lot of Dawn talking, and it's not usually that way. Um, so if there's something that that you're working on that you want to share with people, if there's something interesting you've been thinking about, something you know interesting research report that you read that's very relevant for OSPOs um, around metrics. Like any of that stuff is fair game. Just add it to the agenda. Uh, let me know uh, who who added it, and and we can we can add stuff pretty pretty organically, and we can talk about whatever's interesting for all of you. Yeah, I had a question, or uh, Dawn, I had a question about that. Um, yeah. If if there aren't many agenda items in future meetings, is it possible to use some of these meetings as um, like working meetings where we could do some of the cross OSPO experiment with Gary and Emma and kind of work out what that means or, or, or some, or the viability model, just kind of like start digging into some of the details of those and um, either helping to write or helping to just like talk through it, I guess. Yes, absolutely. Um, and we could just add that to the agenda as like a discussion topic. Um, okay. So we've, we've had a few of those in the past. And that's actually the the intent of this one is that um, we'll use this as kind of a working meeting for for how we're how we're going to approach that. So we'll this will be a standing agenda item um, on on this meeting for for a while. OK, cool. But yeah, we can we can use these for for some uh, to get some work done for sure. Great. Thank you. Yeah, awesome. Okay, well, I think we're we're just about out of time. So thank you all so much for coming. And uh, I hope to see you all around in two weeks at our next meeting. Take care, everybody. Thanks, everyone. Bye, everyone. Bye, everybody. Bye. Bye.